yes, I've been cheated on, but I also have cheated before you guys. And it's something that I'm not proud of. And it definitely ruined the relationship. If I look back now, everything that I've learned, how I've matured, there's absolutely no way on earth that I would deal with half of the things I dealt with in that relationship. I'm not going to tell you that if your partner cheated or you're cheated, the relationship is broken forever. It's going to take a lot of work, though, and you have to forgive and try to forget. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Today is actually the last Monday in the month of June, and that means we're pretty much halfway through the year. I hope you're all doing great and counting your blessings. If you didn't know, that's something I do every single morning, and I recommend you guys do it too. We have a pretty interesting episode in store for you today. It's all about cheating in relationships. So let's get into it and do the damn thing. This is Cheekies and Chill. All right, guys. So let's talk about cheating. It's obviously a major form of betrayal. When you cheat on someone you supposedly care about, you're violating their trust. I don't know if you guys know, but I've been cheated on in the past. It's something I've talked about briefly in a recent interview, and I want to talk about it more here on my podcast because this is where I feel safe. So, wow. Like I said, cheating is definitely a form of betrayal. It is disrespectful, obviously. There are people that feel that texting someone that you shouldn't be texting is cheating. Flirting is cheating. Basically, anything that you wouldn't want your partner to do, you should not be doing. And I completely agree with that. And I'm going to start off by first saying that, yes, I've been cheated on, but I also have cheated before you guys. And it's something that I'm not proud of. I was young and it definitely ruined the relationship. So let me go back. So the first time I was cheated on that I knew of, that I found out, was with my very first boyfriend, my formal boyfriend, the one that I think I talked about a little bit here um, on one of the episodes. I was basically 19 when I met him. We lasted like four years. We were engaged. We were going to get married in December, I believe, of like 2006. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was December. December 16th, 2006. I, I, I remember precisely. <laughs> so a lot happened. I'm telling you, I was young. I was very attached to my siblings. I was attached to my mom. I was afraid of marriage. Basically, I woke up one day and I said, I, I don't want to get married. I told him on a Wednesday, I'll never forget, a month before getting married. We had the location. We had the honeymoon. I was getting my dress made. And I just woke up one day and I said, I, I can't marry you. Like, I'm not ready. I still want to be with you, but I'm not ready to get married. Of course, he was devastated. He was heartbroken. He was just like, how can you do this to me? Which I completely understand. I was just afraid. I was afraid to leave the nest. I was afraid of not being there for my siblings, for my mom. And although my mom loved him and said he can move in with us, obviously he didn't want that. He's like, no, we need to have our own home. But I was just very attached. And that I think was the first big thing in our relationship. Um, He started acting different. And of course, I got attention from someone else and I kissed him. Here's, here's the thing. He never found out about that. I don't know if he listens to this podcast, maybe his, because I'm really cool with his uh, wife now. They have three boys. He's happily married. I'm very happy for him. Her and I are cool. So I'm sure she listens to it, I think. <laughs> so now he's going to know, but he doesn't know. And the reason I'm saying it is because I don't want to talk about being cheated on and not first saying that I have also failed in this area. And anyways, I got some attention. He was acting weird as he should because I had just broken his heart and I just canceled our engagement, our wedding. I called it off and uh, he just wasn't being the same. And I got attention from someone. I went out to like a nightclub with my friends and he was a very cute guy. He was a lot older than me, a lot older than him. And I don't know. I just, I liked him. There was something about him. He flirted with me and he gave me some attention. We kissed and nothing went further than that. Uh, but we did kiss and that's still cheating, you guys, even flirting. I was I was wrong. And again, he didn't find out. But then he continued to act weird. And I found out that he had also gone out and met this girl at like, a like I think I was working or something. I don't remember exactly why I wasn't with him that night, but I didn't go. And he went out and there was a very pretty girl. She had black hair with green eyes. And 
I think I looked through his phone or something and he was texting this girl. I'll never forget because we were baptizing his sister's son, who's still my godson. I love their family very much. And he was like on his phone. And I'm like, he's been so weird. Like ever since we like called off the engagement, he was acting very, very different. And he was just like, not like, it seemed like at all into me. I felt like he was a little disgusted. He was just very disappointed. But then I never will forget that he was just on his phone the entire time at the party. Like the family was there, everything. And he was just in a corner texting. So I looked through his phone and sure enough, he was talking to a girl and I got her number. And of course I called her and I spoke to her and I was devastated. Mind you, I knew what I had done, but we were, I guess, doing the same thing at the same time, which means the relationship was over, obviously. And he had just met her, I think like two weeks ago. And she told me, oh my God, I had no idea he had a girlfriend. He told me he was single. He told me that he had just broken up with his girlfriend. But the thing is, her friend, I guess, knew who he was, had noticed him from like, I don't know where, but this friend of hers knew that he worked with my mom and that he was my boyfriend. So I think she knew. I don't know if she was lying, but la cosa es que they were talking. She said that they had only kissed. They hadn't had sex. It had only been two weeks that they had like been talking. And apparently he's like, I could see myself marrying you. I could see myself having kids with you, this and this and that. And then she was at first really cool when I spoke to her. And then she became a bitch. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Of course, I was devastated. Of course, I told him off. I was just like, how could you do this to me? This entire time, you guys, I was being a hypocrite because I knew what I had done. Obviously, I didn't tell him. But of course, either way, I was hurt. I was just like, I can't believe you do this to me. I never in a million years thought that he would do that to me. He bought her flowers. He took her in our car. She's like, oh, yeah, I was in his car and his BMW and your guys' initials are on the headrest. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's not lying. So she told me all these details. I, I like, was obsessed with her because she was a beautiful girl. Like, ojos verdes, pelo negro, like, completely different from me. I have green eyes, but they're a little bit, like, hers were, like, green, green. So I was just, like, obsessed. I was like, oh, my God. So, of course, we broke up for a little bit. He begged me. And I just, it was never the same. It was never the same. The relationship was over when him and I, I think him and I were actually, I think I had just done the same thing, like maybe like a month before, you know what I mean? So it's like, we were both like, I think just trying to make it work because we were comfortable, but I guess it was just over. Anyways, I forgave him and I told myself, I'm going to make him fall in love with me even more. And I'm going to let him go when I'm ready. And that's not the right thing, but I'm, I was younger and I'm admitting to it because I've learned so much from that situation that I feel like I ruined something good. And I've told you guys this before. He was a really great guy. He is a great guy. I love his family. I still have communication with my comadre, her little boy. That's not a little boy anymore. He's like 16 years old now. And, you know, I, I learned from that situation. Era más de codicia, más de decir, okay, you cheated on me. I'm going to make you fall in love with me and then I'm going to leave you. I never felt the same after that. And I basically broke up with him. I think we lasted maybe like a couple months. It just didn't work out because it wasn't the same. And quite frankly, I was having feelings for this other person. I had stopped talking to him after I was like, no, this isn't right. But then once we broke up, him and I started talking again. He was no good for me, that other dude at all. I met him at a club, okay? He was like a bouncer at a club. It's just, it was not good. I needed to learn my lesson. So I feel like I lost something good and it was because I was young, because I was too attached to my family. And I'll never forget. He told me, you give so much for your family that one day, this is what he said, word for word. He said, te van a dar una patada en el culo y te vas a acordar de mí. And I was like, no, that's never going to happen. Like, I'm going to always be there for my mom, always going to be there for my siblings. And basically that relationship ended. Him and I tried maybe like a couple years after and it just didn't work. It's just once you break that glass and that trust, you guys, just it's never the same. And now he's happy and everything happens for a reason. And I'm happy for him. And I learned myself that I don't ever want to treat someone that way because I was so focused on my siblings, on my mom, that I was not giving my relationship the place that it required, the place that it deserved. And I learned because there were times when him and I were on our way to a date and we had things planned and my mom would call me or one of the kids and I would just like drop it just to go, you know, to go help my mom or whatever. 
And because I felt for a long time, that's what I had to do. You know what I mean? But I also always left him like, well, where do I stand? You know, and he was a good guy. He was loving to me. He was respectful. I was just afraid. And I also did things that I think karma came back and bit me in the ass. So that's what happened with the first time I found out that they cheated on me. And that was tough. And from there, I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure that in every relationship I am, if we break up, it's going to be because of them, not because of me. I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to be good and I'm going to be respectful. And then I met someone else and he also cheated on me. <laughs> So a few years go by, I meet someone else. I was with him for about four years and a half. I was determined to make the relationship work for many, many, many reasons. Uh, if you guys want to know, you guys can read both of my books. I mention it in Perdón or Forgiveness and in Unstoppable. So I talk about it a little bit more in depth. But anyways, I was determined to make that relationship work. I was going to be the best girlfriend ever. I was not going to cheat. I was afraid of what could come around and bite me in the ass. Like I had ruined that first relationship. I feel like I ruined it. Anyways, he also did his thing. You know, he, it wasn't right what he did, but I take responsibility for my part. And I was also afraid of him. I thought, oh my gosh, this guy, I, I don't know what he could do. You know what I mean? So I was faithful. I gave my everything to the relationship. I wanted it to work because my mom did not approve of that relationship from the beginning because he had five kids, because he had two baby mamas, so on and so forth. And I was determined. I was like, I'm going to make this relationship work. And it did for a little while. It was a very odd relationship. If I look back now, everything that I've learned and now that I, how I've matured and I've grown as a woman, there's absolutely no way on earth that I would deal with half of the things I dealt with in that relationship now. But I was young. And to be honest, he helped me grow up in every way. So I'm grateful. He helped me grow up as a woman, as an artist. He taught me a lot of the business. He helped me a lot with Johnny, like a lot. So I'm grateful. He has his business. He has his record label. And back then, he had what you would call Dell models. <laughs> and there was just a bunch of these girls, hot girls, you know, that would, you know, take pictures with the merchandise, with the tanga, the whole thing. I knew a few of them. I was cool. I was cordial with them. They were nice to me. They knew who I was. They knew I was his girl. And... <sighs> Basically, he cheated on me with one of them. Again, I had his passcode to his phone. He gave it to me. Like, el solo. El me dio el passcode. He said, Here, here's the passcode. And I never really looked into the phone because I felt like if he's giving it to me by himself without me asking, then he's probably not doing anything, right? So I would never look at his phone. Not even when he was asleep or anything. Like, I just, I thought, oh my God, he gave me his passcode. How nice. He has mine. Like, there's nothing to hide. Anyways, we were at his office one day and he had musicos there and a few friends and some of his friends, girlfriends, we were all sitting together and he left his phone on the table. And I got curious. He was drunk and I just got the phone. I picked it up. This was, I want to say, two years into the relationship. And I picked up the phone and I put in the passcode and I just looked. And then there was like an email that I was like, oh, what? I wonder why this email is not registered. You know, it was in his text messages, so they were emailing from like, or texting, should I say, from an email. So I looked at it, and there pops a picture of an ass. Uh, uh, like, you know, all these like provocative photos of this girl. And at first, I didn't know who it was. I just knew it was a girl, obviously, because it was, it was an ass <laughs> and some tits, you know? So I was like, oh my God. And then I saw his comments and how he said yummy and like put the tongue and like all these emojis. And they were like going to meet up. I was supposed to fly out to Miami to do like a tribute to Selena that weekend. And they were supposed to meet up while I was gone. So I read all of this. Of course, I got furious because I'm like, I basically I felt at that time that I had lost my relationship with my mom because I defended this relationship. And I just felt completely emotionally destroyed. Like I was like, what the hell is going on? I got crazy. I went up to him in front of all his friends. I choked him. I said, I can't believe you did this. I took his phone. I left. It got really bad, you guys, really bad. I scratched up his car. He was kind of staying with me a little bit, like at my mom's house. He was helping me there. 
he helped me out a lot. You guys, like he wasn't like the type of guy that was like a freeloader or anything. He was just stayed with me because Johnny was so young and he really did help me a lot in so many things anyway. So he was staying with me a little bit at my mom's house and, and he would help me financially there. And so I had some of his stuff. So I put it all in black bags. I stuffed it in his car. My plan was to take his car full of his stuff and just jam it and crash it into his office. That was like going to be my grand entrance. Thank God I never did that. That was in my thought. I was just very furious. I wrote up, scratched up his car. It got really bad. Anyways, with that being said, we broke up for a couple months. This girl, this is a thing. I was super disappointed because unlike the first time they cheated on me, she said that she had no idea who I was. We don't know. Her friend knew who I was, but she said she did it. She said that she was under the impression that he was single. So, okay, pasamos esa. But this one, this girl worked at the office. I was there every other day. Everyone knew that I was his girl and she was disrespecting me. So I took it more of like, you're disrespecting me as a woman and I'm not going to allow you to do that. Obviously, things changed after I forgave him and we got back together. Pero yo estaba muy decepcionada con ella because... She wasn't a friend of mine, but I was cool with her. I was very nice to her. I knew her brother. Her brother and I went to school together. And there she was, flirting with my man, was going to meet up with him. They were going to have sexual intercourse while I was gone working. I just couldn't understand. I was like, how is it that a girl could do this? I was just more disappointed in her. Anyways, of course, we broke up. We broke, we broke up for like two months. I made him suffer because I was obviously devastated. And... He did. He begged me and begged me every single day. Like, I kid you not, like he begged me and I forgave him. I forgave him because I was grateful with him because I wasn't ready to let him go because I loved him. But ever since that happened, everything changed within my heart. Like it was just something just changed and it was never the same again. And I think the same thing happened there where I was like, okay, I'm not going to let this other person, this other woman come and think that she's going to, quote unquote, take what I've worked so hard for because I had given so much to that relationship and I helped him change so much. And he had already changed so much that I was like, I've already put in so much work. I'm not just going to move out of the way for a girl to come in and just lo tiene tan fácil. She has it easy, you know? So it was a little bit of ego in there as well. And of course, like everything I just mentioned, like I, there was love, there was history, there was so much that had happened with my family, with my mom, that I felt like I need to make this relationship work. And I tried. And again, I was still faithful. I did not cheat on him, even though he had cheated on me. When we were broken up for those two months, I met someone. But obviously, that's not cheating because we weren't together. You know what I mean? He knew about it. He found out later. He wasn't happy about it, obviously. But I never cheated on him. Anyways. That, I think, was the beginning of the end for our relationship when I found that out. And it was hard to trust him. He really did make a lot of changes and said, you know, and it really felt like he wanted the relationship to work. But because he had done what he had done, he then didn't trust me because he felt that I was going to do that. It was his guilty conscience. So the relationship was just, it was doomed, <laughs> to be honest, from that moment on. And a lot of things changed in his office because of it. And a lot of just things changed in the relationship. And anyways, it didn't work. The bottom line is that it did not work and the trust was lost. And I think trust is definitely earned. And I, I think he was doing what he could to make the relationship work and for me to earn his trust. But I think ultimately it was his guilty conscience that ruined the relationship because he felt like, oh, she's out traveling. She's going to cheat on me. Like it was constantly in the back of his mind. And that was a huge part of, of why it didn't work out. One time I was at the gym and it's when I lived in Corona and there was an older man and I told him about what was happening. He said, look, honey, I've been married for 40 years. He said, I have cheated on my wife. And let me tell you, this is what he told me. <laughs> he said, every man cheats at one point in their life. One of two things happens. Either they like it and they continue to do it or they don't like it and they feel so bad that they'll never do it again. He's like, but every man cheats at one point in their life. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's not going to be on me, but maybe he cheated on his ex-girlfriend and he learned his lesson and he won't cheat on me. It's kind of how I saw it because it kind of did like mess me up a little bit. I'm like, well, that sucks. Like, but I guess it's bound to happen. 
I like to think that there are faithful guys out there now with, with Emilio, you know, you guys know that I'm in a relationship and I have, I like to say, I think the healthiest relationship I've ever been in, to be honest, he's gone through his share of things. He also was cheated on. He also cheated. And it also taught him what he wants in a woman and what he doesn't want. I think that's why our relationship works because we've both been through our share of relationships where we've hurt the person and they've hurt us. And now we're just like, okay, let's make this work. Let's be honest. Let's put everything on the table. But I think it takes time and it takes experience to get to that point, you know, whether it be in the relationship that you're in and they've already cheated on you, you know, and you forgave them and you guys are moving past it and forward. Because here's the thing, I'm not going to tell you that if your partner cheated or you're cheated, the relationship is broken forever. I think through therapy, through intention of you wanting to make it work, it can work. It's going to take a lot of work though. And you have to, the first thing is forgive and try to forget. Because if you keep bringing that shit up all the time, it's going to ruin the relationship. If you're going to forgive the person, forgive them and let it go. Do your best to let it go and work past it and work together and make the changes necessary on both ends, on both sides to make the relationship work and move forward. For me personally, I think if Emilio were to cheat on me at this point, I would just have to let go of the relationship. As much as it hurt me, I, I don't think I want to put myself through what I put myself in the past. Like say, okay, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make them fall in love with me. I'm going to make them in a way suffer for what they did. You know what I mean? Like I don't have time for that. I'm like more mature now. I, I don't have the energy. I don't have the time for it. And we both are on the same page. If we were to cheat on each other, it's kind of like, okay, Let's just part ways because the relationship won't be the same. And we're, we have to be okay with that decision. Now, I know of people that other celebrities and have forgiven their, their partners for cheating and they move past it and they're okay. Maybe, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But I think right now, if you were to ask me right now, if I found out that Emilio cheated on me right now, I would have to let go of the relationship because I just... I don't want to deal with that. You know what I mean? And I don't want to put him through shit because I probably would. Like I'd probably become a bitch and I'd probably, I, I, I won't be the same. I know myself. So why put him through that? And why put myself through that? You know? And he's also told me, I'm not going to deal with that. It would be done. So we have that mutual understanding. Anyways, someone once asked me, is an emotional versus a physical cheating situation, is one worse than the other? I think they're both bad, to be honest. I mean, I think it would hurt me more if my partner was emotionally involved with someone. You know what I mean? Like versus it be just a one night stand. I think both are bad, but I think it would be like the one with my very first boyfriend. He was emotionally involved with that girl. Like he was talking about marriage, about children, about moving in together within two weeks. That killed me. That killed me because I'm like, dude, how? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Like, I, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe that. I think just like devastated me even more versus with like that other dude. It was more of like, let's just bone. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. It's just have sex. It still hurt me, of course, but I feel like I was able to get over that one a little easier because I still stayed for two and a half years after that. Like, we still stay together. Anyways. I think, yeah, if you're going to get, if you're cheating on your partner and you're getting emotionally involved with someone else and you're giving them more attention than you're even giving your significant other, then you should not be in that relationship at all. You need to let go. There's something wrong. You're obviously not into your partner. If you're emotionally involved with someone else, that's something that I'm like, uh, uh, I cannot. And if I could just give anyone advice, anyone that is listening that has been cheated on, I'm not one to tell you what to do. I can just speak from experience. And if you have been cheated on and if you chose to forgive that person, that's admirable. Like, I get it. Make sure that you are forgiving for the right reasons, first and foremost, because that's something I didn't do. I, I was not forgiving for the right reasons. So make sure you are forgiving for the right reasons. Children are involved. You have children together. You've been together for years. Obviously, you love that person and you want to make this work. And I think through therapy and you both have to be on the same page, that person also has to want to go to therapy. And you're going to know, you're going to feel it in your heart when someone is completely sorry, but you'll know 
this person's really sorry. And no one should judge you if you decide to stay with the person and forgive them. I think that relationships can work if both are putting in the same amount of effort to make it work. Just make sure that you forgive and you try to forget. I know it's easier said than done, but you have to forget. You can't keep bringing that thing up because it's just going to create more dents and more cracks in the glass. It will eventually just break completely. Now, if you're the one cheating, you need to check your heart. Personally, that's what I feel. You need to check and reflect and analyze the relationship you're in. Because if you're doing that, then that means you're not happy, you're not attracted to the person you're with, or you're just greedy and you want that person, you want to have your cake and you want to eat it too. So I would just say, leave the person you're with if you want to cheat, leave them. None this con esa persona, don't hurt yourself and don't hurt them. That's just my personal advice. I'm telling you, I've been on both sides of the spectrum and it's not nice. I don't like to hurt anybody and I don't want to be hurt. and I think we just need to treat people the way we want to be treated. We're not perfect. I ask for forgiveness. I'm like, God, forgive me. Like, I don't, I don't want to hurt people. I really don't. Like, all those things that I, I did when I was younger, like, it just taught me and it molded me to be the woman I am today. And the main thing is I want to be a positive force, a positive addition to someone's life. I'm not here to hurt anybody. You know what I mean? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I want to be something good in their life, something that they can be proud of. Like, dejar... Mi huella en la vida de todos, you know, like my footprint. I was here and, and it's, it's, it was a good experience, you know, which is why I, I feel bad for what I did when I was 20, 21, 22, 23. You know what I mean? Like you're young, you're dumb. I'm sorry. Like you're barely learning. But make sure that the things that you've done also teach you and you learn that lesson that you're meant to, to learn so that moving forward and in, in your future, you can be happier and have peace in your heart and in your mind. I know everyone feels differently about whether or not you should stay with someone who has cheated, but I think everyone should make their decision and do what they feel is right for them. So if your friends or family open up to you about it, just listen and support them and try not to judge them too harshly. That's just something that I truly believe. With that being said, we are going to close out the episode and give you guys my motivational quote for this beautiful Monday. I actually have two quotes for you guys today. One is, breaking someone's trust is like crumbling up a perfect piece of paper. You can smooth it over, but it's never going to be the same. The next one is, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening, uh, for being here with me. I hope that you learned a little bit more about me from my mistakes and a little bit for you, for your future, for your present. Gracias por estar conmigo cada lunes y los veo aquí el próximo lunes. Los quiero mucho. I love you guys. Besitos. And guys, I want to let you know there's a brand new way for us to keep in touch. You can now leave me a voice memo directly through the iHeartRadio app. Just click the microphone at the top of the Cheekies and Chill podcast homepage within the iHeartRadio app. And if you don't already have the app, you can download it for free. Your questions and comments could be featured in a future episode. So feel free to let me know what's on your mind. This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Cheekies, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S, for more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 